1.8 trillion pieces of plastic, 79,000 tons, roughly three times the size of France. Unfortunately, all this describes the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is currently floating in the ocean waters between California and Hawaii and is growing rapidly. Within the last 10 years, we have consumed more plastic than ever before, and this worldwide consumption has reached 320 million tons total. Around 72 billion plastic bottles and 500 billion plastic bags are produced each year, and unfortunately, this is obviously harming our ocean and making the garbage island even bigger than it is now, which is two times the size of Texas. We need to face the truth that if we continue to treat our Earth the way that we currently do, the planet that we know and love will be altered beyond our ability to repair. Sea level rise has a tendency to appear less existential than it actually is, rising 6 to 8 inches, but only over the course of several decades. However, with the acceleration of plastic use, fishing, and other environmentally threatening industries, the rate at which sea levels are projected to rise is accelerated as well. In urban settings, particularly the 8 out of 10 major global cities that reside on a coastline, rising ocean levels threaten infrastructure vital to local jobs and regional industries. The bridge you cross to get to work every day is underwater. The production factory that provides thousands of jobs for low-income, blue-collar workers had its boiler room flooded and the building was evacuated. The brick walkway by the waterfront in New York City that's a popular tourist location for selfies and scenic views only exists under the sea. If we continue at this rate, worst-case scenario predictions from previous years will soon materialize. Projections demonstrating the highest conceivable speed at which glaciers could melt information that was only intended for research purposes, are becoming extremely plausible. When we think about the ocean, especially if living in a landlocked area, we might just characterize it as some distant entity that has no direct impact on our lives, unless we decide to take a beach vacation, of course. However, this perspective could not be further from the truth. Sylvia Earle, a conservationist, marine biologist, and National Geographic explorer, states, If the sea is sick, we'll feel it. If it dies, we die. Our future and the state of the oceans are one. Though yes, plastic pollution is a huge problem affecting the health of our oceans, there is an underlying issue that might be even more harmful. Some researchers believe that plastic pollution is a convenient but distracting truth that companies use to be able to seem much more environmentally friendly than they actually are by simply switching to biodegradable materials. However, climate change is one danger to the ocean that's not addressed as much by these same companies, and an issue that's more drastic than exclusively plastic waste. In order to produce goods and packaging, like plastic, the burning of fossil fuels and depletion of nutrients through deforestation are unfortunate but consistent byproducts. We need to realize that problems affecting the ocean both start and end on land and are the result of man-made practices. Industrialization was a great development for our country, but did not have a positive impact on the future of our environment. The increased ability to keep up with American consumerism and capitalism has caused the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere to skyrocket. Climate change and global warming are becoming more and more prominent in our day-to-day -day lives. The excess of carbon dioxide also leads to ocean acidification, which has led to mass extinctions of species in the past. If one species dies off, this disrupts an entire food web and ecosystem. When the temperature of the oceans rise, their ability to absorb carbon dioxide decreases and ice sheets and glaciers melt. This results in an increase in sea level, which will lead to countries and communities being underwater in a much nearer future than we might think. In addition, as the ocean gets warmer, it has less of an ability to hold oxygen, so animals and marine life move closer to the shore in order to survive, which inherently increases their vulnerability to overfishing. With about 80% of the ocean still unexplored, it is easy to think of oceans and large bodies of water as an unknown entity that don't affect us as human beings. Marine environments have been described as a realm beyond society that seem to operate on their own. Despite these misconceptions, marine environments play a pivotal role in regulating the conditions that sustain life on Earth. Overfishing occurs when humans remove fish from their marine habitats faster than the fish can repopulate. Overfishing creates a chain reaction that then affects the rest of the ecosystem and the food chain. It's proven that the loss of apex predators, which are the predators at the top of the food chain, almost always negatively affects the marine ecosystem. Even removal of lower trophic level species, such as sardines and anchovies, can create a decline in dependent predator populations, such as large fish and marine mammals. 
not only are the quantity of fish decreasing, but also the quality. When top predators are removed from the food chain, the catches decrease because the population of the predator's competitors increase. Despite the number of fish decreasing each year, our society is still feeding into the dangers of overfishing. According to a study published in the Marine Policy, China, which operates the world's largest overseas fishing fleet, has increased harmful subsidies by 105% over the last decade. The statistics of overfishing are astounding and only get worse each year. In 1989, about 90 million tons of fish were caught, and in 2003, it was estimated that the industrial fishing had reduced the population of large ocean fish to just 10% of their pre-industrial population. Without being aware of these effects and being proactive, the overfishing numbers will only increase. If these rates continue, it is predicted that all of our world's fisheries will collapse by 2048. Plastic pollution, climate change, overfishing, and the construction of dams and bridges are just a few examples of detrimental threats to the oceans. Furthermore, please keep in mind that we are just focusing on one body of water, and there are many more issues that impact rivers, lakes, and streams. And of course, if we talked about the extensive environmental problems on land, we would be here for days. Yet there is significant value in at least just being aware of the fact that our actions here on land do significantly impact oceans and all the life they hold. In the same manner, the health of the oceans affects our health. 40 to 50% of the oxygen in our atmosphere comes from the ocean. For us, this means that every second breath we take is thanks to these bodies of water. In addition, the rising sea levels have caused unnecessary drownings and injuries to people. The ocean also regulates global weather patterns, so one serious impact that we might not think about is the effect of extreme weather events on our mental health. Finally, ocean acidification is leading to seafood shortages and is creating chemical pollutant uptake change, which can lead to chronic disease within humans and animals. If we continue at this rate, both on an individual and collective scale, the Pacific garbage patch won't only be in the Pacific. Overfishing will eliminate itself as an issue because there won't be any fish to extract and half of our beloved cities will be underwater.